Hi, I'm Brian Elliott. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Brand. Today I'm here with author, entrepreneur, thought leader Seth Godin. Seth, welcome to the show. Thanks, Brian. Yeah. Shame is what, especially women, girls, use, are, is used on them, right? To say, how dare you? You know, we come up with words to describe people who, are, who have the hubris to be vulnerable and to make art, and we use shame to undercut all of that. And so this black cloud of shame is at the heart of this. It's the partner of the resistance, Steve Pressfield's great term. And when shame and the resistance get together, you're in trouble. The answer, it turns out, is not to fight it. It's to acknowledge it. It's your compass. For me, when the resistance kicks in and says, you shouldn't do that, that's how I know I'm on the right path. Right. That I look for that feeling, and instead of fleeing or fighting, I listen to it and do it anyway. Yeah. And that is where we're going to make the impact that we deserve to make. You've talked about it before, leaning into the curveball, running at the dog, embracing uncertainty, all these things, completely not intuitive to getting through that kind of thing. Right. Because ordinarily it's a brick wall. You let the words of other people or the applause or the lack of the applause determine your worth or how valuable your project That's is. That's exactly right. And most people just quit. Yeah, because it seems so comfortable, which we think means safe. And so now there's this bitterness of people who persuaded themselves that the world owed them this stable, risk-free life. And now that the industrial age is going away and it's not being given to them, they think it's someone else's fault. Well, no, they just didn't read the manual because the manual has been pretty clear for a few years, which says, we're not going to keep doing that. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I sort of understand why people would feel that way because the rules of the game have changed. Sure. I get it. You know, go to college, get a graduate degree, get a fantastic job, you're done. You're set. Right. And that's all gone. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, but, you know, so, some of the people who are whining about it, you know, people in the newspaper industry, what? You just heard? <laughs> I'm not buying this. You're in the newspaper industry. You've been hearing about it for 14 years. The first time I spoke to the newspaper publishers of America was 14 years ago. Yeah. If you were in the room, you heard it, and then you've seen it, and then you saw Craigslist, and then you saw this, and you saw that. And for you to be sitting here whining that too many people are on BuzzFeed and not enough people are reading your paper that you delivered to their house in a truck, yeah. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. So it's selective listening or denial. Yeah, because all creatures, particularly humans, will do almost anything to avoid fear. And so when someone shows up, you know, the, the magic of the Industrial Revolution is the Henry Fords of the world showed up and they said, you don't have to be afraid. You merely have to do what I say. Yeah. I will take responsibility and then I will make you rich. That yeah. was a really cool deal. And generations gave up their spark in exchange for richness. But now the New Deal shows up and it says, you have to be scared out of your mind. You have to feel like you're risking everything. And then some of you will get rich. But all of you will actually have a better life because you're going to be human, not cogs in a machine.